The Repulsine. Victor Schauberger was an Austrian inventor who focused on how water flows in nature. He believed that modern machines were harmful, while nature had better ways to create energy. Schauberger argued that water, when allowed to flow in a vortex, could create its own energy by pulling inward. An implosion, a concept that contrasted explosion-based technologies like combustion engines. He built several devices, the most famous being the Repulsine, a disc-shaped machine meant to create propulsion and free energy using vortex motion that allegedly made it hover. His work got the attention of the Nazi regime during World War II and he was allegedly forced to develop his inventions for military use, leaving him wary of potential misuse of his discoveries. After the war, he continued experimenting but never achieved mainstream success. Apparently, US intelligence even took him into custody for nine months. The Levitation Platform Viktor Grebenikov, a Russian self-proclaimed insect scientist, discovered what he called the cavity structural effect by studying insect structures like bee nests. While lying on an underground bee city, he allegedly felt strange sensations and noticed heat and force-like effects coming from the honeycomb patterns. He believed these shapes created invisible energy fields. He later examined insect shells under a microscope and found that their surface had a highly ordered rhythmic structure. When placing two of these chitin plates together, one would briefly float before snapping into place. Grebenikov thought this hinted at anti-gravity. He used this idea to build a levitation platform covered in thousands of insect shell pieces. He claimed it could fly up to 1500 km per hour at 300 meters high, make the rider invisible from below and create a force field that cancels out inertia and air resistance. His claims were rejected by mainstream science. His 1992 patent was denied and when he tried to publish a book, most images and diagrams were removed without explanation by the publishers. A colleague of Grebenikov later said he was part of a suppressed scientific underground and his technology may have been silenced due to its potential power. No physical platform was ever found after his death. The Cloudbuster Wilhelm Reich, an Austrian psychoanalyst turned researcher, developed the Cloudbuster in the 1950s based on his theory of orgon energy, a universal life force he believed could affect weather. The device used hollow metal tubes connected to copper hoses placed in water, which he claimed could draw energy from the sky to dissolve clouds or cause rain, like a lightning rod. Reich tested the Cloudbuster in several experiments, including a case in Maine where he said he ended a drought and saved a blueberry crop. Supporters saw it as a breakthrough in weather control, while critics dismissed it due to lack of scientific proof and repeatability. The US FDA began investigating Reich over his orgone energy work, including health claims. In 1956, he was jailed for contempt of court after refusing to follow a ban on distributing orgone-related materials. The FDA eventually seized and destroyed his Cloudbuster devices, books and research. The Hendershot Generator In the late 1920s, American inventor Lester Hendershot claimed to have created a fuel-free device capable of generating free energy. It used coils and capacitors to draw power from the Earth's magnetic field, reportedly running on its own and powering light bulbs and motors without any external power source. His public demos drew attention, but efforts soon followed to discredit him. Critics staged fake demonstrations to make the device appear useless. Hendershot continued refining the generator and even submitted two models and a detailed proposal to the US Navy, which was rejected. In 1961, he was found dead, officially by taking his own life, though the lack of investigation sparked suspicion, theorizing that his work posed a threat to large energy corporations. Rumors spread that a major energy company had paid him $25,000 to stop working on the device for 20 years. The Hemp Car 
In the 1940s, Henry Ford developed the hemp car, an experimental vehicle made from hemp-based materials and powered by hemp biofuel. It reflected Ford's vision of combining agriculture with industry, using renewable farm-grown resources for manufacturing. The car's body was built from a plant fiber composite, including hemp which was lightweight, biodegradable and reportedly 10 times stronger than steel. It ran on biofuel made from hemp seeds, offering a clean burning, low cost alternative to gasoline and a step toward energy independence. In a 1941 demo, Ford showcased the car's toughness by hitting it with a sledgehammer, without causing damage. But despite its promise, the project was halted. Oil industry power, legal limits on hemp cultivation and World War II priorities pushed the hemp car and its exact formula into obscurity. The Radiant Energy Device In the 1930s, American inventor Thomas Henry Moray developed the Radiant Energy Device, which he claimed could pull endless energy from space. Inspired by Tesla's work, Moray built a 60-pound device that supposedly converted ambient energy into high-voltage electricity, producing up to 50,000 watts for hours. He publicly demonstrated it powering lights, radios and motors without any visible power source. Despite this, scientists remained skeptical due to unclear theory and documentation. Moray failed to get funding before World War II. Apparently, the Rural Electrification Administration, which he worked for, was penetrated by Soviet agents. Rumors claim the Soviets may have used his research to build secret mind control or energy weapons that can affect people or objects from a distance. Coral Castle in Homestead, Florida was built alone by self-taught engineer Edward Leed Skalnin between 1923 and 51 using over 1000 tons of stone. Allegedly, he worked at night in secrecy and no one ever saw how he moved massive blocks, some weighing up to 30 tons. Leed Skalnin claimed he had discovered the same secrets used to build the pyramids. He said he cured his own tuberculosis with magnets and believed all matter was made of tiny magnetic particles. He also wrote about magnetic currents and may have used Earth's magnetic field or some unknown energy to move the stones. Photos show him using simple wooden tripods and pulleys, but many believe this couldn't explain the scale of his work. Some think he used magnetism or sound waves to lift the stones, tuning into their natural frequencies to make them lighter. He left behind no clear explanation and his methods remain a mystery. Today, Coral Castle is a museum that continues to puzzle researchers. Wasp XJ was a small single-person flying aircraft developed by Williams International. Powered by a turbofan engine, it could take off and land vertically and was controlled by the pilot leaning in the desired direction. Nicknamed the flying pulpit, it could hover, rotate, move in any direction and fly for up to 45 minutes at speeds reaching 60 miles per hour. It was tested by the US Army in the 80s but was eventually dropped, as helicopters and drones were seen as more practical and capable alternatives. Nikola Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, built between 1901 and 5 on Long Island, New York, was meant to wirelessly transmit both communication signals and free electrical power across the globe using the Earth as a conductor. Tesla envisioned a world where energy would be unlimited and accessible to everyone. The tower was designed to send music, news, stock reports, military messages and even images wirelessly and was part of a planned global network of energy transmitting towers. Tesla believed this system could tap into universal energy from the sun, air and ether. Financed at first by JP Morgan, the project was halted due to skepticism and when Morgan discovered Tesla's goal to deliver free power, which couldn't be monetized. 
funding was cut and the tower was dismantled in 1917. After Tesla's death in 1943, the US government seized approximately 80 trunks of his belongings, of which only 60 were later sent to the Tesla Museum in Belgrade. The Water Fuel Cell Stanley Allen Meyer an inventor from Ohio, became known in the 1980s for creating what he called the water fuel cell, a device he said could power a car using only water and cross the US on 22 gallons. He claimed it worked by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen, using a special method that involved electrical vibrations to break the water apart more efficiently than normal electrolysis. Meyer showcased his invention in a dune buggy that, according to him, ran entirely on water, any kind of water, from rain and snow to ocean water. He said it was clean, cheap and didn't harm the environment. Scientists were skeptical. In 1996, Meyer was sued by investors for fraud after they failed to see proof that the device worked. Two years later, Meyer died suddenly after a restaurant meeting with foreign investors. The official cause was a brain aneurysm, but his brother claimed Meyer ran out of the restaurant saying, they poisoned me. This sparked rumors that he was silenced to stop his technology. Even after his death, people have tried to recreate the water fuel cell, but no one has succeeded. The Hoxie Tonic Harry Hoxie's controversial remedy, known as the Hoxie tonic, was an herbal mixture developed in the 1920s from a formula said to come from his great-grandfather. It combined ingredients like red clover, burdock root and licorice, and was promoted alongside dietary changes as a natural treatment for serious illnesses. Hoxie opened clinics across the US, claiming to have documented proof of success, including patient records and x-rays. Despite alleged support from patients who turned to him after conventional treatments failed, the medical community dismissed the tonic as unproven and potentially dangerous. The American Medical Association and FDA accused Hoxie of selling unapproved drugs and practicing medicine without a license. After years of legal battles, the FDA banned the sale and marketing of the Hoxie method in the US in 1960, calling it fraudulent. Although his clinics were shut down in the US, his head nurse relocated the practice to Tijuana, Mexico. Project XA in the 1970s, researcher James D. Mould developed the palladium cigarette, named for its use of the chemical element palladium and magnesium nitrate to neutralize many of the cancer-causing chemicals found in tobacco smoke. The project was backed by the consulting firm Arthur D. Little and tobacco company Liggett and Myers. In lab tests, animals exposed to smoke from the palladium cigarette developed far fewer cancers. But after 25 years of research and roughly $10 million invested, the company abruptly ended the project. Lawyers warned that releasing a safer cigarette would expose the company to lawsuits from people harmed by its existing products. As a result, the company ordered Mould to keep his findings secret and the palladium cigarette quietly disappeared. The Aero Wagon was developed in the early 1920s by Soviet inventor Valerian Abakovsky. This propeller-powered rail car used an actual aircraft engine mounted at the front to pull the lightweight car along tracks, aiming to drastically cut travel time and modernize rail transport. The Aero Wagon could carry up to 22 passengers and was shaped aerodynamically to maximize speed presenting a radically different alternative to traditional steam locomotives. In 1921, it made its maiden test run from Moscow to Tula. The outbound journey was a success, but tragedy struck on the return. Traveling at high speed, the aero wagon derailed, killing seven on board, including Abakovsky. An investigation found that the existing rail infrastructure couldn't safely handle the aero wagon's speed, leading to its fatal derailment. The project was immediately abandoned. The Ogle Carburetor, created by self-taught El Paso mechanic Tom Ogle in the 1970s, was a fuel system modification that allegedly allowed a car to travel over 100 miles on a single gallon of gasoline. 
Ogle's design worked by vaporizing fuel before combustion, aiming to drastically increase efficiency, reduce emissions, and lower fuel costs. He publicly demonstrated his invention on a modified 1974 Galaxy, gaining attention, patents, and interest from investors. However, skepticism from experts persisted, and his fame ended abruptly when he died at 24 under suspicious circumstances, officially ruled as an overdose. His sudden death sparked theories suggesting that oil companies or auto manufacturers may have suppressed his invention. After his death, the Ogle carburetor vanished from public view. Its patents remained, but the technology was never adopted by major car makers. The Rife machine, invented by American scientist Royal Raymond Rife, was a device he claimed could tackle severe diseases using targeted electromagnetic frequencies. He believed each disease-causing organism had its own unique frequency and that broadcasting the right frequency could destroy it without harming surrounding tissue. In 1934, Rife claimed to cure 16 patients using his machine, reporting a 100% success rate without scientific backing. His work was dismissed by the medical establishment. He faced legal action for practicing medicine without a license and his research was destroyed, leading to the collapse of his career. Though the mainstream medical community rejected Rife's claims due to a lack of scientific evidence, his machines became popular in alternative medicine circles, but no health authority recognizes them as a valid treatment. Multiple sellers have been convicted of fraud and the devices remain unapproved and controversial. Electrogravitix was pioneered by American inventor Thomas Townsend Brown, which he believed involved a form of anti-gravity generated by high-voltage electric fields. His work began in the early 20th century with observations now attributed by most scientists to electrohydrodynamics, or ion wind, the movement of charged particles pushing neutral air molecules producing thrust. Despite this conventional explanation, Brown maintained that the force he observed, known as the Bfield-Brown effect, indicated a true gravitational interaction. Brown built devices like the Gravitator, which looked like they moved on their own when he ran electricity through them. He believed this demonstrated anti-gravity and proposed that such propulsion could revolutionize aircraft and spacecraft. His experiments even caught the attention of the US military, though mainstream science remained skeptical, viewing the effect as electrostatic thrust rather than a new force. Brown's ideas got popular with hobbyists who still built simple flying devices using high voltage electricity. His legacy, however, became entangled within the UFO community, some of whom claim his work was suppressed possibly by the CIA, and that he had uncovered real anti-gravity technology. Following his death, much of his research faded from public view, continuing to provoke debate. <laughs>